Thank you, Fritcher, for uh, agreeing to do the interview. And uh, congratulations on the book uh, making our top 50 list. It's a great honor and a great pleasure. One, I can't wait to see it, to see who my colleagues are in the other, the some, other 49. Some very uh, distinguished colleagues and, uh, and one of many of your books and it was interesting to see which one also emerged mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be on a, a sustainability uh, book mainly voted for by business people. So mm -hmm. very interesting that the turning point mm -hmm. uh, came out on that list. Can you tell yeah. us though, it was a, it was a uh, something of a journey from the Tower of Physics, which was your real blockbuster, yes. to the turning point. How yes. did that happen? Well, what happened was um, that when I published the Tower of Physics in uh, 1975, I wrote it in London and uh, was published first in England and then here in the US uh, in 75. And it was really successful beyond my wildest expectations. I had friends in London who were writers uh, who said uh, if, you, if you sell 10,000 copies you can call it a bestseller and uh, you know it soon went up to 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 and has now sold over a million. So, so it was wildly successful and that success uh, got me a lot of invitations to speak to various audiences. Actually one of my very first lectures was at the Chelsea School of Art in London and at the Architectural Association. So I spoke to artists and architects and then I would speak to health professionals, doctors and nurses, I would speak to psychologists, uh, business people, uh, you know, biologists, academics in various fields, students you know, of all disciplines. And so I met a lot of people and the surprising uh, experience was that when I gave lectures and seminars, very often people would come to me and say that a similar change of concepts and values from a mechanistic worldview to a holistic and ecological view is happening now in their fields. So they were talking about a paradigm shift in medicine, in psychology, in economics, in anthropology. And so I wanted to investigate uh, this broader area. I should also say that um, in my personal development and biography, I was very much influenced by the social and cultural movements of the 1960s. And now looking back, I see um, the, the 60s movement as an expansion of consciousness in two directions. One toward the spiritual with an interest in Eastern philosophies, spiritual traditions, yoga, meditation, Tai Chi and so on which came to the West, to the West in, in those days. The other uh, an expansion of social consciousness with the ecology movement, the environmental movement, the women's movement and various the student movements, various social change movements. On, on the larger global uh, stage we had um, the um, uh, Prague Spring with Dubček in, in Czechoslovakia, uh, we had uh, the civil rights movement in the US and, and various strong political movements which all um, I think uh, had something in common and that was questioning authority. So the civil rights movement questioned the authority of whites over blacks. Doctors and nurses and psychotherapists questioned the authority of the doctor vis-a-vis -vis the patient. Uh, students questioned the authority of professors vis-a-vis -vis students. Uh, you know, the Dubček and his colleagues in Prague questioned the Soviet authority in the satellite state of Czechoslovakia and so on and so forth. So, uh, at that time in uh, 68 and 67 I was in Paris. So I was in Paris in May 68, was very much influenced by these events and so had a very strong um, social conscience which I didn't have as a student in Austria because Vienna was sort of a little on the side and, and very provincial, you know, politically and, and, and culturally in, in that sense. And so in Paris, I, uh, my thinking really got radicalized politically, but I was more attracted 
by the expansion of consciousness toward the spiritual um, and, and religious and that's how I wrote the Tao of Physics. Mm -hmm. But the other part was always in the back of my mind and I, I had friends who were active in progressive organizations both in Europe and over here when I moved to the States in 75 to California and uh, then when people told me in these lectures and seminars that various dramatic changes happened in their fields I also kept you know the social dimension and the the, the political dimension in 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 mind and so that led me then to write the turning point the origin of the turning point was in a course that I taught at UC Berkeley and I called the course beyond the mechanistic worldview it was a sort of a seminar and I invited many guest speakers to it and that was sort of already the model of the turning point I, I didn't think of writing a book at that time but I just wanted to explore these ideas mm -hmm. and this is by the way how I work I uh, I never plan to write a book at the first step. I gather material and at some stage I will have enough for a book and then decide to write a book. But I'm always interested in ideas first and I always talk to people first and you know gather material. So that's what I did in I think that was around 77, 78 and I realized right from the start once I planned to write the turning point that I couldn't do it alone, that I could not go to say a biology library and look around for the best books in biology. I wouldn't know where to look. So I needed experts and so I developed um, a rather fine sense of judging people, people whom I met during my lectures and seminars and conferences. When I saw somebody who sounded really um, outstanding and who shared my basic perspective and values. And then I would contact these people and, and start conversations with them. And, and then, you know, many of them became my collaborators. So by the time I was ready to write The Turning Point, I uh, had five or six collaborators whom I asked to help me with the book.